slow it down a little. Good. He's got pretty good hip mobility. Everyone has probably heard us grass, something like that. They're not squatting deep enough. A couple of considerations here. Some people can't squat that low. Just biomechanically cannot squat that low. Okay? So it's a pretty big consideration. Have a chat with a trainer or your physio and see what they say because some people are locked up in this hip and can't get all the way down. There's things to there's Thing, other things that might be coming into play. Please do track forward a little bit over your toes. That is just biomechan biomechanically how it'll happen. If you try and say, he sits back like that, you see he starts to fall backwards. If you load up with 130 kilos on your back, you're probably going to fall over. He goes into that squat position. I actually want his chin up a little bit. Not all the way, just up a fraction more there. Okay. It's just so that we're not in the uh, dangerous position of if you are looking down at your feet and all of a sudden you do have weight on your back later on, you're not going to start to fall forwards either. So a nice straight neutral back into that position here. That's a stable position and when you think about it in terms of defense for frisbee, you're here in that athletic stance. You're not back here, which is where people try and say don't let your knees track forward over your toes and you're not leaning forward to this position here looking at the grass instead of the defender. Yeah, slight bend in the knee, straight out. Good. Okay, so what we're doing here, this is single leg. This is a little bit of control, balance, as well as a little bit of um, lower limb strength. So TCAS here, first movement, slight bend in the knee. From this position here, he hinges at the hips. He doesn't bend from the back. Movement comes from the hip. The opposite leg stretches out. And the key here is to try and avoid any hip rotation. So go back into that position. What we're not trying to see is him open up that hip and twist. Okay, it takes a little bit of that control in the hips, in the glutes and everything like that to be in a straight position here. Okay, make sure you bend the knee and you're not locked out straight. You'll end up with just a stretch through your hamstring or calf or something like that. And it's not doing what it's meant to be doing. So three sets of five reps on each leg and I'd hold that position for five seconds. From here, out. If you want, you can put the hands out if you're feeling quite confident. To begin with, often people will start with them crossed in front of the chest here. Okay? From that position, then you can get into more complicated movements, single leg squats and everything. It's just a hold. It's just a hold. Yeah, yeah. So you're not sort of doing this. It's into that position. Find it. Hold it. Stand back up. Relax, go back into that same rep. Okay? Stay with the same leg, finish the, that set, switch to the other side. There is a lot of value in uh, chest exercises, back exercises, and because Frizza is such a whole body activity, we do need to make sure we're hitting all spots. So, uh, push ups, I know a lot of people here can already do them. Um, We'll go through a couple of variations now just so it gives you a few options. The part in the program for tier one is just an incline push up. Um, you don't really have anything here, like that's probably as close as you're going to get. Um, ideally, you'd be on a bench or on, the, on a lower fence than that. But the key with this one is a straight line. Um, you can have your hands facing forwards to the side, depending on if you've got any sort of wrist injuries or pains through your hands. Play around with that, that, however it's more comfortable. The key is that straight body position here, down to about that point and straight back up. Okay? That's all it is. Pretty straightforward. Key, straight body, chest doesn't have to touch the ground, go close to it. Ideally, you've got about that much bend in your elbows. If you go narrow, you're using more tricep. It's more of a tricep extension exercise. If you go too wide, it almost becomes a dumbbell or a fly in that sense. So probably just outside of shoulder width, that gives you uh, chest as well as still a little bit of that tricep extension too. Three sets, five to 10. Again, this is tier one. If you're already comfortable with that, once tier two comes up, you can bump it up. Um, or if you're more confident, go onto the ground. Incline is a very safe way. If you're not familiar with the exercise or you're not confident yet, 
it's a really good way to do it. I would highly recommend you get a power band. So, if you're unfamiliar with these, you can feel, you know, resistance bands, if you grab that, there's quite a lot of force in it, okay? So it's not just a light reaction, light resistance, there's quite a bit of resistance in this one. I would highly recommend getting one of these, they're about 20 bucks. So this one is a row. Yeah, neutral grip. From this position, seated, and he's just pulling that in. Okay, so this part, if you're at the back and you can't see him, want to stand up, you can. He's working through the back here. He's trying to draw his shoulder blades together in that position. You get a good pump on as well. <laughs> okay. So you can do this with normal gym equipment. They've obviously got the seated row. This one's just very convenient if you happen to not be anywhere near a gym. So with this position, you can see he's up nice and tall. He's not rounded at all through the back and not leaning forward and in that movement he's locked in and it's just through the arms you'll see a lot of people start to lean back and they try and use that momentum and lean to get the extra distance but it's really all through the arms and the best way to do it if you've got a, a partner or you're working with someone get him to put a finger or the thumb on each shoulder blade and you focus on bringing those together that's the easiest way to do it a little bit of tactile feedback Um, so this one's a bit more of a core, a bit more balance. Side on. Yep. So with this one, the way we're going to do it as well, you can um, dynamically do it, but for this one, we're actually just going to do it static. So he's going to get into the position and just hold it. Tough exercise. So ideally, what you start to get... Thanks, Dicker. Some that are really, really good at this and really strong can put a fair bit of pressure on your hips. So ideally, you're in a, a slightly more elevated position here. From that position, you can then try and extend, which obviously I'm not as strong as, but it's, as soon as you move things away from this center of gravity, it becomes a lot harder. So by extending out, you can see I already start to want to fall down. Does it matter if your back's straight? You're trying to get it as straight as possible. Um, obviously, the stronger you are, the more likely you are to be in that really nice straight position if you're trying to hit that straight position. Uh, and then as you get stronger and you're able to hold that for longer, you start to get a bit more extension and move that center of gravity further out. Don't hold it for 10 seconds. Once you get used to that static position, then you can incorporate a dynamic movement as well. Lunge clock, you are going to do one set. One set, clockwise and counterclockwise. So TCAS, just gonna Pretty straightforward, it sounds what, like what it is. You've got a clock, you lunge out to 12. He's going counterclockwise to begin with, that's fine. Keep it. And once you hit six, you swap legs and go to the other side. Okay? Hit six, swap and go back, and then out this way. With this one, the way we want it to work, so TCAS is slightly leaning forward. I want you to be a little bit more upright with this one. Step back, just touch the ground from here, and then back up. So we're not going for a big, long, lunge all the way back as far as you can. We want it nice and back, knees still over the foot here, and then back up. Chin up, chest up, back, same out here, same out to this side, and back in. Leaning forward, I want you to be a little bit more upright with this one. Step back, just touch the ground from here, and then back up. So we're not going for a big, long, lunge all the way back as far as you can. We want it nice and back, knees still over the foot here, and then back up. Chin up, chest up, three sets of 12 each side. So this one's a really good exercise uh, for hamstrings, glutes. If you've ever done a hamstring injury, this is one of the best exercises for rehab. Obviously a little bit um, uh, not as difficult as this. This isn't that difficult, but once you're coming back, do it a different way. Um, but also just one of the best conditioning exercises for your hamstrings, other than glute ham, sort of declines and, uh, and deadlifts. Beautiful. So this is the starting position. 
Uh, you can play around with this a little bit as well. The further you are away from the item that your feet are resting on, the harder it will be. Okay? So you can do this on the ground as well. Actually, up again, back down. Beautiful. So that's oh. two foot on the ground. Fairly easy. If you're coming back from any hamstring issues, it's probably a good spot to start. It's probably the easiest sort of level that you're going to start this exercise at. Can I get you to bring your left knee into your chest and hug it? position she's going to do the same movement that TCAS just did trying to lift her hips up off the ground you're driving your heel into the piece of equipment that you're on generally a bench or a box and then back down beautiful up again so Lyra whereabouts are you feeling that hamstring hamstring good I mean she's doing all right the ways you can make that harder easiest way two feet on the ground up and back down after that you move your feet further out, becomes a little bit harder. After that, you move your feet back in, go to single leg. After that, you move that single leg further out. After that, you lift that leg up onto a raised position and you do both feet, still on that uh, bench or box or whatever, lifting your bum up. Go to single leg and then you move that further out. 12 on each leg with that one. Um, modify that for your own preference. Eight to 12 would probably be good. Uh, if you're particularly not strong, or if you're particularly weak with your hamstrings, um, it will be quite taxing and quite difficult. Okay, so do build up to it. Um, if anyone's seen uh, hip thrusts as well with barbells, it's kind of similar to that exercise and it's a good lead into that exercise later on. The next exercise we're looking at is a pike press. Similar to a push-up, but it's in a pike position. Bum up in the air. Good, good. Your hands are normally just in front of your shoulders, which they are. Uh, you're in a better position. Oh, yep, there you go. Bums up in the air. Good. And essentially, the best way I've taught this exercise is you're going to try and headbutt the ground. So from that position, you go down and back up. Yeah, headbutt that ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, you'll feel this in a couple of areas, in the shoulders and in the triceps. Obviously, if you've got shoulder issues, I'd probably avoid this exercise unless the physio has said else. Wise. Uh, otherwise, um, but a really good way of just building up some strength in the shoulders and some stability as well, okay? The key's there, not too far out. Not too much under here, or it's just a tricep extension again. Um, and trying to keep that nice straight position. Don't bend in the knees like this, or you're just kind of going into a push-up. You may as well do a push-up. Okay. Uh, three sets of 10 for that one. In the gym with a, a, a dumbbell or a weight or something like that, you can do it with this band again. Um, oh my Standing on it, similar to just upright here, if you can. Oh, it's a bit of a difficult one. This is probably, the resistance is too high. Essentially from that position, you're just going to try and pull them out to the side. So standing on a band, or if you've got dumbbells, um, whenever you're in these positions, we don't want the straight legs to be locked out. Get that support. In a defensive position, we want that support here as well in the athletic stance. Same with a fly, slightly bent knees, Dumbbells in front, um, yeah, I'd really recommend doing this with the dumbbell. It's just a lot easier. Um, from here, straight out to the side. You don't want it to go as high as you can. Put a bit of strain on the shoulders, not above shoulder height. It's realistically just to about there, and you should feel the scapula or your shoulder blades here really pulling together, okay? I would start very light to begin with. Um, I would start with an empty dumbbell, to be honest. Why not? It's up to you. I would probably be in about this position here. Um, some people will go to this point here, but then they have a tendency to do this and they use their back to get it up with momentum. Okay? Um, if you're having to do that, then your weight's too heavy. If you have to do that, your weight's too heavy. So I'll start here and just pull it to that point there. Oh, I, I physically can't do anything more with my arms um, without changing my position. 
three sets of 15. Um, again, this is probably a, bit, a little bit more of an endurance one with that sort of rep range. Um, so I would, coming back to AJ's point, keep the, the weights quite low, um, certainly for the start. Okay. Slightly wider foot position, they've also turned them out slightly. So it's not front on here, going out into this position, you just sort of pinch into your hips if you do it that way. We want them slightly turned out. We'll give you a little bit more depth in the squat position. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, go for it. Good, nice, nice and upright. Wow. Not trying to sit back too far, their heels aren't lifting up. Really good. So that's all that is. Three sets of 20. Um, and then obviously once you get more comfortable with that, you can hold a weight or something in front of you as a goblet sumo squat. Um, a really good cue that I <coughs> got taught once is actually when you're doing a squat, is to try and imagine that the floor is a piece of paper and you're trying to rip it apart with your feet. If you do that, you'll automatically see that my legs come out a little bit and they hold that position. If you can hold that force on the ground, it'll keep you in a, a good knee alignment position. There we go, that's better. So what I just got Lyra to do there, what the way she... Uh, you guys can chill out for a sec. <laughs> what I got Lyra to do then was actually try and engage her core and flatten her back. When she first set up, she went into this position here, and as you can see, there's an arch in my back. Okay, a whole heap, that means a whole heap of force, pressure, and load is going straight through her spine and right at the base where we already cop a lot of force anyway. All right. Um, you'll notice, very much be able to notice if you do start to feel it through that lower back <coughs> that you're probably jamming up and you're not switching on your core well enough. Um, so know more about that. I'd definitely recommend seeing anyone who does Pilates or seeing a physio that offers clinical Pilates at their uh, <coughs> clinic as well. Really, really worth it. Even just for learning that. Translates across to so many other exercises and helps you brace for any other lifting, running, anything like that. Really worthwhile knowing. We'll be doing three sets of one minute. Obviously, it's not really um, high impact, so you can modify that time frame really, really easily. Okay, really easily. One minute's easy, push it out to two, push it out to three, see if you can get the ten. There's always a right and a wrong way to do these exercises. They're high impact, high intensity, um, and high risk. Biometrics are incredibly high risk. Um, it's that risk reward sort of situation. So one thing if you can talk, uh, take away for plyometrics from this session is never do more than about 80 to 100 contacts, foot contacts in a session. And even then it's depending on what sort of exercise you're doing. So if you're doing more than 100 foot contacts in a session, you're probably going to blow something out pretty soon. Okay, just because that is so much force and so much stress on your body and joints and bones. Um, that, that, yeah, it's not something that's talked about a lot, uh, loading um, outside of the gym. It's really easy to count how much weight's sitting on a bar. It's very hard to say how intense a plyometric session is when everyone's doing the same or slightly different exercises, okay? So never more than 100 contacts, please. 